Good morning, beloved. Welcome to Sunday Church. For those who are joining us online, you can find us on Facebook. Our handle is at Beloved Sons of God. So write to us. If you live in Bombay, if you want to be part of other sons, uh, we'll share our address with you and you can come and be uh, join us live here. Um, even on Zoom, if uh, we'll add you to, we have an um, international read-only WhatsApp group. We'll add you on it so you can join us live. Uh, we share links, updates, testimonies on that. So it's going to bless you. Um, also below this video, I have a PDF. So if you click on it, it's going to open to scripture verses that I'm taking today. Okay. So who remembers what we are talking about? Reigning over, over sickness. Yeah. And what do you all remember from the last message? Someone wants to share something important. What did I begin the last message with? Yeah. Sin leads to sin leads to condemnation. After Adam sinned, he was co condemned. Condemned, heart can't receive. Condemnation leads to death. What is condemnation? Guilt, that you've done something wrong. The world, after Adam sinned, even if you're born, kids, after some time, the heart is already condemned because Adam is condemned. And then everyone born of Adam is just condemned. That's why it says in Hebrews, uh, to sprinkle our hearts from an evil conscience because your conscience will keep condemning you. That's why the Holy Spirit is in you to convict you of righteousness, even when you're condemned. Okay. And the more righteousness conscious you are, what happens? Righteousness leads to life. Okay. Can I have the board up here? And... Um, I'm not going to draw much on it today. So we didn't finish part one. The next week, I'm going to take one more on healing, uh, which is going to be more practical. And uh, and then after that, Michael is going to join us. Michael Shatak, he's coming to India. Um, so we put the dates up. I'll share the invite with you. He's going to be for four meetings with us. And uh, then he's going to have ministry down south. Um, Hmm. I just need a black pen. Okay. So, uh, we talked about last week about Adam's sin. And because of sin, what happened? Because of sin, death came. death came in. Okay. And what happens? Jesus took your sin away. So, now what has he made you? Right. Righteousness of God in Christ. And what does righteousness lead to? Life. Yeah. So how do you get sickness out of your body? You have to, the Bible says, those who receive. Righteousness is available to everybody, but not everyone receives. Everyone loves to be in a state of condemnation and keep confessing their sins because they feel they're doing God a favor. You'll do your father a favor when you receive the righteousness that his son Paid for you because it was very expensive for his father your righteousness it cost him his son so every time you're receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that's what pleases your father because you're making the blood of Jesus every drop very worthy you're celebrating the father you know how many know when uh, I get an iPhone okay and when I meet people who are like very tech savvy they hated to sit with me because I bought a new, I keep buying new iPhones, not for the upgrades. I buy the new iPhone because the world is buying, okay, I'll go buy it and then I'll use it only for WhatsApp. <laughs> I don't even know the three lens feature and everything and people, when they sit with me, they get irritated because I'm not doing justice to the upgrade of the iPhone. How much do you know when the Apple person who made that design that latest iPhone, when he sits with me, he'll be very happy I make use of every little thing that he upgraded it to because he's saying, now you're using all of it. And to sit next to me and just use it for WhatsApp, he'll just be like, go get something else. That's what it is like with Christ. Whatever he died for, when you are using all of it and juicing all of it in your life and receiving it, it makes him very happy. It makes the father very happy. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing, okay? So you, we can't get life in our body if you keep thinking you're a sinner. Because sin consciousness leads to death. Righteousness consciousness, it's not your righteousness. He gave you his righteousness and that righteousness is a gift that he paid so that you can have it. That's why it says we are righteous not in our works, by faith in 
Christ. So I have his righteousness. So every time you do something silly and you dust it off and say, you know what, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. That's how you receive life in that area. You know, you can be condemned in so many areas. It's one thing to have a head knowledge of it, but it's really one thing you don't even know where you're condemned. Like for example, parents can think that they haven't done enough for their children. And the child is spoiled, maybe because they didn't do it, they gave them too much love or they just pampered them and they can have this condemnation in them. Kids can have that condemnation, oh, I, I didn't do enough for my parents. And you'll realize, what is that? You're just feeling condemned. And that's the time you shake it off and say, I know I could have, and this could have been better, maybe, but still, everything is going to be perfect and the fruit is going to be amazing and my kids are going to grow up to be amazing children because Father, Christ, I'm standing in your righteousness. Because what does the Bible say? All my kids, all your children will be taught by the Lord. Not because whether you're good or bad. Just because you're in Christ, Jesus, I just thank you. I may not have even ministered. But because this promise is here, it's because I'm standing in your righteousness, this is going to be the inheritance of my kids. Or this is going to be the inheritance of my parents. You can get condemned over your career. Maybe if I did that degree, maybe if I chose the right thing, I wasted so many years of my life. And you can really get condemned about it. And that's the time you say that, you know, I'm going to be here and I'm going to get the best thing added to me because I stand in your righteousness. Yeah, it's a good thing I could have done that degree or I may not and you can still do it. But the reason why you inherit is because now in the midst of everything and all those accusations coming to disqualify you, you pull them down and say, I'm standing in your righteousness. That's why I should have it. I remember when I went, you know, I know this has got to do with healing, but trust me, when you're hearing everything that I'm saying, it'll lead to healing because it's healing is directly related to uh, proportionate to righteousness consciousness. The more condemned you are, it's difficult. The more righteousness consciousness uh, you have, you'll receive it effortlessly. I remember when I was, uh, <clears throat> my first job that I came to Bombay and I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, when I knew that God had called me to India, okay? And um, I came here and then I decided where is easy money. So I looked at Bollywood. I said, okay, I have to get into Bollywood. And you know, I, can, I, I can't do the nine to five. I know some people can, but I knew that I couldn't. And um, so I looked at it and so I looked up the top, the best production houses. And I had no experience. Because I knew when I go one day, I will stand and my entire rest will be on my father putting something in that person's heart to give me that project. For one year, I had no work. And I was trying to get into this one production house. I was after this one guy, I was making calls. It looked like I was knocking, knocking and no response. It looked like this wasn't God. But I just didn't give up. And then one day, everything came together. I was at the right place at the right time. I picked up the phone and called up that same number again. And they said, can you come in tomorrow? I said, yeah. And the boss, the CEO, the owner of this production house were that, uh, was there for that meeting. And so I went and met her. And I'm sitting across. I have no experience, nothing to, to show my work. I just spoke. And she loved me. And after that day, she gave me the project. She gave me the biggest show that time. It was one of the big shows. And she gave it to me just because she liked me. It had nothing to do with the work. And she told me later, the way you speak, I can't wait to see what you do. And she gave it on that, okay? And uh, I believe she saw the sun. Now, she doesn't know it, but she saw the sun. And it's good that you have all the merits. I had everything in place. I had my MA degree. I had uh, certain, you know, my portfolio and everything. But when I was sitting in front of her, I was banking my father to do something that was really impossible. It was grace that will get me ahead. Okay, and that's what I mean, you can have everything, but don't let anything disqualify you from being ahead. Okay, I remember, um, uh, you know, let's take a few examples here because I wanted to really sit in. Um, taking care of your body, okay, we're talking about health, right? Whether you do fitness, you don't do fitness. Whether you ate right, you didn't eat right. All of these voices condemn you. Like for example, she talked about a medicine, whether she takes the pill or doesn't take the pill, it doesn't matter. Don't let taking the pill condemn your heart, don't let not taking the pill condemn your heart. Because your life 
is coming from his righteousness, not your righteousness. That means whether I took it or I didn't take it. Your life, I told you, is coming from the Holy Spirit that is in you. For humans, it comes from their body. For us sons, it says, Jesus said, I live because my father lives. And I have just the way the father has life in himself, so the son has life in himself. That's why he is a life-giving spirit. Electricity, electricity. Think about electricity. Electricity's nature is to give electricity to others. It cannot stop being electricity. Your understanding. What I'm saying is because who, who electricity is, the same way your life and your nature, like the nature of light is to repel darkness. Now, whether you believe or not, kid believes it or not, you take light and you switch on the light and a candle, darkness will flee. Why? Because it's in the nature of light to repel darkness. It's in your nature. That your life, sons of God, your life does not come from the food you eat. Because it is, food is perishable. How can the life of the sun come from something that is perishable or something that is created? Creator will not get his life from creation. Creator will give life to creation. Your life is coming from another source. The law changed. Our loss is law of life. And your life is coming from the Holy Spirit that is in you. Okay? And so what is this? Your heart comes to accuse you, condemn you. And that's the time you have to shake it off and say, I'm standing in your righteousness. It means I'm qualified to have life. I'm justified to have life. It says justification for life. You should have. Why? That means in this area, I should see the promises of God. Because it's not dependent on me. It's dependent on what you did to me. You did on behalf of me. I'm standing in your righteousness. That means not guilty. Righteousness means, okay? For example, in relationships, you could think what I could have said, maybe I shouldn't have said this, and maybe it would have been better had I, did, had I done all of these things right, maybe this would have been the outcome. And maybe it would have been so and so. And all of these voices come to accuse you and, and you know, you can go in a reasoning and a cycle and a pattern and it can really take you down the, down the hill. And that's the time you shake it off and say, it doesn't matter what I said, what I didn't do. Father, I stand in his righteousness, in Christ's righteousness. And I thank you that whatever this is, it's going to be the way you desire it for me. It's just going to lead to life. That's your portion. The end result of your, your fruit to any situation that you're in is going to be life, not death. That's your rest. Okay? And so what are you doing? You're learning to pull down. So we don't even know in the areas that you're condemned. I was going over yesterday and I was seeing, wow, in this area, you know, righteousness is one thing to know righteousness. And then you look at certain areas and I'm like, wow, why am I I'm condemned here? And then you're dusting it off in saying that, no, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I don't know how many voices accuse me and negate me and nullify. And then I stand that I'm in your righteousness. Doesn't matter what I did, what I didn't do. I stand in your righteousness. Okay? Your understanding, you're awake. Okay? Now look at this. So we ended it last week at um, Romans 8. Okay? We are at 2 Corinthians 3. 2 Corinthians 3. I'm just going to read Romans 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life. The spirit is life. The spirit is life. Why? Because of righteousness. So when is it death? When were you dead? It says in Ephesians, we who were dead in our sins and trespasses, God made us alive. You were dead because of sin. But now you are alive because of righteousness. That's why the more righteousness, righteousness, righteousness flows in, everything disappears. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, say amen. Yes. He who raised Christ from the dead. Who raised Christ from the dead? The Father. The Holy Spirit. He who raised Christ from the dead 
will also give life the holy spirit will also give life to your mortal body that means the law of sin and death is in this your flesh the members it says okay it will give life to your mortal body through the holy spirit who dwells in you see so your life is coming from who the holy spirit so relax you can take the vaccine not take the vaccine it doesn't matter i just say pick one because today there is a lot like it's the mark of the beast and this and that and like seriously as sons just be above it take it don't take it just make a choice because it doesn't matter your life is not coming from the vaccine it's coming from the holy spirit if you believe it's coming from the vaccine i don't think so <laughs> and if you believe it's not coming from the vaccine still i don't think so it will still lead to death your life is coming from the holy spirit wake up humans will believe that it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil take the vaccine don't take the vaccine still lead to death doesn't matter okay if the law says it take it like i said it doesn't matter you're above it your government J jesus christ it says in isaiah a government came so there is a government and you you come from another government what is the law of sin and death it's applicable to humans i was explaining this at bible study the law of gravity is here on earth if you go above earth out of the atmosphere go on the moon what law will start operating there you'll start levitating why you're in another other law so th there are laws and there are superior laws and those superior laws the lower laws will have to submit to the higher laws and that's what it means the law of life is in you the law of sin and death is under your feet it's a superior law so you learn to you know how this law operates the law of life in your body by resting and resting is really your really your head coming out of it like it's telling you one to do not to do and then coming just out of that whole conversation out of that cycle and thoughts and patterns okay it says out of those arguments it says pull it down to the obedience of christ means excuse me this this argument is not applicable for me only and you're bringing it to the obedience of christ meaning yeah i'm a son my origin changed this is not my definition so i don't even get into those conversations and people debate about things like that i choose not to why should i get into the tree of knowledge of good and evil i'm particular of the tree of life they converse christians converse i stay out of that conversation doesn't matter okay now look at this so it says here um where was i <clears throat> yeah through his spirit who dwells in you so your life so look at that there's so much of life in that he who raised christ from the dead the father the holy spirit will also give life to your mortal bodies through the holy spirit who dwells in you that's why after jesus rose again what was he waiting for the promise he told all his disciples gather in jerusalem and wait for what for the holy spirit because he knew that everything would be fine job done once the holy spirit is in you first it was only in him in the old testament it came on a few people still not in them and then it left and then after christ died and rose again the biggest wisdom that if if the devil knew he wouldn't have crucified christ i think it says in acts of romans if he knew what was going to happen that christ just multiplied that the holy spirit came everywhere and then what were here the sermon on prayer i talk about prayer in um, on beloved i put it up the only thing that the disciples were praying <clears throat> when they were going paul and all of these apostles that the holy spirit would come that i can have an open door that we go we preach in boldness so that then the holy spirit will come and they would lay hands for the holy spirit to come and then they would go because the holy spirit is there to be your helper the holy spirit is your counselor the holy spirit is fixing all things so your dependency is who holy spirit in you he's more real than you know and how will you meet him if you just hang out if you learn to relax i was telling you how the law of life works right it works by resting and in bible study i was talking about rest is really when you sit on a chair the weight is on who the chair 
but you can't really rest if you if you don't know that the chair is holding you it's resting is like trusting trusting that he has got you that the word has you that him in you is doing everything that's true rest where and it's it's resting the more you start resting worry leaves it's natural because it's got to do with trust and so you can't really sleep on a hammock right and lie down and have perfect rest if you don't know that the hammock is holding you and that's my point it goes with like trusting and that's what resting is trusting that it's all him in you and he is repelling everything out of you i don't get into the way i told you sometimes i uh, again at bible study i was sharing and i had like symptoms here and there sometimes they'll pop up and with high temperature or something like that and i just go to sleep resting it's really trusting knowing that father i thank you your resurrection life holy spirit is supposed to kick all of this out and i just go to sleep and i get out of the way <laughs> let him do his job he's in you to do something constantly giving you life and that's really resting and every time i get up it's something is not there it's disappeared okay um that's how the law of life works and i'm going to get into the practicality of that <clears throat> in the next week uh, next sermon okay let's uh, read 2 corinthians 3 the spirit not the letter and we have such trust through christ towards god now that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from god who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit ministers of the new covenant is ministers of the of the spirit that's why your words are spirit and their life sometimes i uh, i tell you i i li like sons just to go have conversations because i know it's not what they speak it is who is speaking that makes the difference like we are looking at you know last week i shared about how jesus talks about the poor right the bible doesn't say give money to the poor it says tell them the good news and then the good news because that person won't stay poor so in beloved we, are, we uh, you know all the the seed that you give in we're looking at getting translations done in india we are working at that right now we are trying to get hindi translations done and so how am i looking at who is perfect in hindi to get it right now i'm looking for a son to do it who knows he is a son is because it's not what he is perfectly translating it's the life that he will give that things will get shifted so it's an anointing because the more you are waking up to who you are it's an anointing that you carry so you may not even have it all together perfectly translated and one can have it just perfect and there's no life and one is just a little bit of things they say but it got the job done is because it is not your translations it's the one who is speaking and that life is coming out okay so hindi a lot of we are going to have some sonship uh, you know and you all can forward it uh, because that money if we give it's going to die out they'll come back again it's not going to get job done that's why jesus think about it he came and what was he giving to everybody not money he was giving life because life multiplies anything tangible will die that's why jesus said you you're coming to me after he multiplied the loaves and the fish some of the disciples came to him he saying you're coming to me for the food because you saw me multiply the loaves and fish but he saying this will perish but come to me because you see life because life will multiply it will never perish so what do we invest in life so we're getting our sermons done whatever it costs us and we're making it so that when they are released the person will not stay poor I shared this testimony once when I had a uh, my help at home okay and she was working with me and she was doing like some four or five jobs and making that amount of money and so she was talking to me she was my first help at that time and so I told her about Jesus she came into the kingdom and suddenly um and uh, you know her husband was drinking he was not working he didn't have a uh, job the minute she came into the kingdom and I told her that now she's become a son of God order came into her life the mother in law there were mother in law issues suddenly there was wisdom in the house so the mother in law should stay on top another layer was built over the house maybe it was always there maybe it was not there but just wisdom came so now the mother in law is away from the daughter in law suddenly the husband gets a job 
So now he's busy, so he's not beating his wife. Now he gets busy, he's happy. And where she was doing four jobs or five jobs, she gets this one job to take care of this old man whose children live abroad. And they were paying her in dollars. So it was converting to a lot of money. And it was converting to all of what she was doing into this one job. And guess what? Even when she took a holiday or even when he went for six months away, they were still paying her. How did poverty get fixed? Me giving money, me giving life. I just had to bring her into the kingdom. And then because life multiplies, it's not my job to make them rich. Righteousness makes them rich. You can't be son and be poor. The Bible says I've never seen the righteous begging for food. It doesn't say Christian, sinner, righteous. But righteousness is to be received. That's why the more you're receiving righteousness, you'll get rich. If you're poor, because you're not receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Say amen. Every time you get condemned, dust it off and say, the reason why I should have life, justification for life is because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Righteousness draws divine health. Righteousness draws relationships. Righteousness draws riches. Everything is added to righteousness. And your right standing is not based on you, it's based on him. Okay, it's his standing that you have. Okay, so let's read that. <clears throat> we are ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, that is the law. But the spirit gives life. So we are ministers of new covenant. New covenant doesn't mean gospels. New covenant begins after the cross. So which are the books you should read? Acts, which are the books written after the cross? Acts, Galatians, Romans, Ephesians. Because if you read the Gospels, Jesus was also talking to the Pharisees. So he came to fulfill the law. So in some he says, you know, you think uh, sleeping is adultery. Even if you look at somebody, it's adultery. What is he trying to tell them? Because they really thought that they can get righteous by their own works. So he's raising the bar of the law. Why? So that you'll come to realize that you need a savior. So a lot of things that Jesus says before the cross, he'll be like, forgive. Okay, what is the, the prayer before the cross? Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. After the cross, we forgive because we have been forgiven. Everything changes. So it's not different. He, will, he came to fulfill the law. And so that's why I always tell people focus on books after the cross. Once you come to know the finished work, now you navigate all in the old books. Everything you'll open up, but you have to see it through the blood. You have to see the, the, the whole Bible through the finished work because a lot of it has been fulfilled already. Paul, uh, David, and all of the old Moses, everyone was looking for you, but you are looking at them. No, they're looking to you. They're pointing to you. And so now you should rest. That's why in the Old Testament, everything is conditional. If you do this, then you'll get this. Do you know in the new, the condition is Christ. Because of him, I should get this. Because of him, I should get this. It all changes. In the old, there's restoration. I was, someone said, and I was speaking, restoration. When you came to Christ, everything has been restored. Now Jesus is not getting any more restored, restoration to him. He is just getting his father's inheritance. You'll get the best, the preeminence a son has. So in the old, it's conditional. They do this and then they get restored four times back, five times back. But as a son, the only restoration you had, you came in Christ. Complete restoration and now your portion is just the good, perfect, what does it say? The good and perfect gift that comes from the Father. That means the best of the best that should be yours. Okay? Um, there are truths in the Bible and there are higher truths. So move on to higher truths. Okay? One of the truths, for example, I'll uh, give you an example. You know this uh, um, Isaiah. By his stripes you are healed. It's a truth. But you can move on to that and say that if, if, if you understand at the cross you became a new creation, that his nature came in you, like when I say, you know, it's not in your nature to fall sick, the scripture is not there anyway. 
Someone says, where are you quoted? It's not scripture, it's a revelation. Because if you put all the dots together, if you're born of him, his spirit comes in you, you got a new heart, oh, I'm under, not the law of sin, the law of life, oh, then it means it's not in my nature. That's what it is. So it, there are higher truths. I remember even when I had symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis in my body, by his stripes you're healed was like, I was taking that word, but I was like, it was not making sense to me. By his stripes you're healed, you're healed. Because I was still feeling that I was sick and that I need to get healed. And then I realized by his stripes you're healed and all of the cross is telling me that I've become a new creation. And so if I'm a new creation, the Holy Spirit, then I was reading this Holy Spirit is in me. Oh, it's not in my nature. I've changed, born from above. And so I started resting, it's not in my nature. The Holy Spirit will do what it's supposed to do. And the more I was fighting the sickness, it was not going. The more I started resting, meaning believing who I was. And that who I was will get the job done. You're not fighting to be who you are. You need to rest when you really know who you are. Once you realize you're God kind, you won't run to be God kind, you'll chill. I am God kind. And everything is trying to tell me I'm not. And that's the fight where I was running to be something that I don't need to, I already am. And the more I rested, that means I had to believe it. Not unto God, to me. He already knows who I am. I had to believe it unto myself. Who I was, I, I made that decision, everything left, okay? This is the truth. This is how you f fight things. You, you fight by really just relaxing and not forgetting, okay, who you are. It's getting hot. Okay. Okay, let's go to verse seven. But if the ministry of death, what? If the ministry of, what? Death. If churches are not preaching sonship, new covenant realities, please don't go. I say this with a lot of humility. Because it says, if the ministry of death, earlier it said, the letter kills. The more condemned you are, sin conscious you are, the more you'll fall sick. And then you wonder why you're not getting healed. Get out. Don't sit. you rather sit at home, really. But don't be under the, the, the worst excuse I've heard people go to a church is because my family went there. You should not go to any church if your family has gone there, if your forefathers have gone there. Go there for the word. Then some people choose church for demographics. They go and see young people, old people, I'll decide. If they're singles, more young people, good looking people, I'll go to that church. You'll still be single. <laughs> I've seen this. Because you choose a church because of the word. Because the church is not going to give you your husband or whatever, your wife. The, it's gonna come from the father. And what adds all things, righteousness. So you can be outside, standing outside a loo, in a line and meet the guy or the girl standing next to you. I'm just saying this, we've seen these testimonies in Beloved, so I'm telling you, okay? Because everything is getting added by the Father. And he is not a matter of, in the wilderness, he made abundance. So you can be in an all girls school or all boys school, <laughs> I'm just saying. And still meet the most beautiful girl or the beautiful, beautiful guy, okay? I'm just saying it doesn't go by demographics. It really goes, your, your dependency is that everything is coming for a son, is coming from your father. And your father is not defined by boundaries. And anything that is perishable comes from the kingdom. Okay, so be all about seeking life, where you're getting life. Life is getting multiplied and you'll, you'll see it, it'll get added to you. Because righteousness leads to life, okay? That's why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his Whose righteousness? Yes. His righteousness and all things will be? So who's adding it? Father, Father yeah. Don't choose a church because of parents when they. Okay? <laughs> really, I feel funny. Sometimes, you know, we, I used to travel sometimes. I started Beloved because I was waiting for the day when someone will talk what I'm sharing. 
and then I was waiting, I was waiting, and then it didn't happen, and I decided, I'll just do it, okay? But I used to travel, if I knew someone is coming from abroad, I would travel like two hours just to hear. And then I decided that if they start a church like two hours away, I would just travel two hours. Just to be, because it's life that you want. One thing I'm sure of, you know, when I, I look at all the other things that God has done in my life, but when I look at beloved, I'm very sure that this is exactly where the Father wants me to be. Because it is just, when I look at each one that is even added to beloved, they're so handpicked that I know that it is all Christ and I'm exactly what, where I am and what I should be doing, okay? Now see this. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? This for new sons, when Moses came down from the mountain, he was just in the presence of God. And so he had like a glory on his face. But do you know that he put a veil and he was hiding because his glory was fading? But it says here, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Your glory is not fading. It's ever increasing that people look at your life and they say, last time I met, he had one testimony. One year later, he has so many testimonies. Five years later, just stop it. <laughs> it's just too much. I can't handle it. It's because it's more glory and glory. Okay? Look at this. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, so it's called the ministry of condemnation. That means sin consciousness is what? Don't do this. You've done it wrong. God hates you. Or God is angry with you. Now what, does it, what happens? You'd be condemned. I can tell people, don't commit adultery. People stay married to their husbands or wives because thus says the Lord. Don't do it because of thus says the Lord. What happens under grace and under sonship is the more you start receiving the life of the father, you stay in a marriage is because you want to. Because all of that love is in you and now you want to give it. So one does it just to fulfill the law. And it will still lead to death. Just fighting and just staying together. Because God says so. But one, their hearts are transformed. And now they're just giving love to each other. Which one is glory? True transformation. Comes only from the Father. He gave you a new heart. And now that heart, even as you're receiving all the love, you're able to give. You cannot give if you don't have that's why if you struggle to give, I just say go and receive. Go and receive how much the Father loves you. Because out of the abundance of your heart, you will give. Okay? Now see this. For the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. So instead of telling you don't do, I won't say don't do. How can I say don't do? Righteousness is not in your nature. It's in your nature to be faithful to each other. Because that's your nature. Because you're born of sons. Sons are faithful. You're born of your father. You're just like your father. And your father loves his bride. The church. Christ. And so you're just like your father. Okay? 2 Corinthians 5. For he made him. Who? Who made who? The father made Christ. What an expense. The Father made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. So Jesus on the cross, sonship is all about identification. When Jesus went, you went. When he took all the whips, you. When he died, when he was buried, you were buried. When he rose again, you rose again. That's why it says, now walk in the newness of life. Because someone else took it. That's why you have to live it by faith. Live it by faith where? Here. That's how you'll receive everything. Because all death, anything, terrible things, happens because of sin. But if sin has been taken away, you should receive life and the inheritance because of righteousness. Righteousness leads to life. Okay, he made him, the father made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Every time you get accused and condemned, start saying this. I have your righteousness, Father. I just thank you for the righteousness that you've given me. I'm going to share this again. I've shared this dream again, but I'm going to share it because it's in light. I remember an assistant that I had, Sayukta. Okay, she came into the kingdom and Sayukta was just, recently I met her, impatient. Okay, and so she came into the kingdom. Few months later, I met her. She wanted Jesus to come into dreams. I said, go to sleep, then he can come. Six months later, I meet her for dinner and she's like, ma'am, I'm wearing white because Jesus told me to wear white. He came in my dreams. I said, Sayukta, one second. I don't think it's lit literal. Tell me your dream. She's saying, in the dream, I'm sitting in my office. I've got my hands on my head like this. I'm worried. And then in front of me is sitting Jesus. And then he looks at me and tells me, tell me all your problems. So Sayukta starts telling him all her problems. And then he tells Sayukta, Sayukta, you have to be patient. You have to learn to be patient. And then he tells her, for all your problems, I have one solution. Is I am wearing white, start wearing white. One second, he said, for all your problems, she's got relationship problems, she's got health problems, she's got mother problems, father problems. There were a lot of problems. But he said, for all your problems, shut up. One solution. As I am wearing white, start wearing white. So Sayukta is physically wearing white every day. For I don't know how long she's been wearing full white. White jacket, white, I don't know what all was white. <laughs> okay. And she's wearing white. And I said, I opened um, Revelations and I said, you know, he's talking about, I showed her about Jesus and all the saints were dressed in the righteous white linen garments. I said, he's telling you to be righteousness conscious. Because righteousness, consciousness leads to life. I said, Sayukta, you're condemned. Start knowing that you're the righteousness of God in Christ. That all your sins, all your past, whatever you're negating, disqualified, everything is under the blood. Now, the reason why you should have victory in all those problems and areas of your life is because your victory is not based on whether you did it or didn't. It's based on whose you are. He's made you correct, right, worthy to receive that. I don't care what that is, inheritance that you're looking for. You should receive it just because I'm born of him. End of story. Why will Ambani's son receive all things from Ambani? Because he's blood born. That's it. Whether he's good boy, bad boy, we don't know. It will be good if he's a good boy. He'll represent his father well. But his inheritance is based on blood. Okay, and that's your resting point and my resting point, that you receive all things. A son knows he's a son by blood. Kaira knows they are her parents, and no matter how much she cries and irritates and throws tantrums, she'll still get food because she's born from them. Okay, and she will come in boldness to say, why didn't you? Give me food and the ice cream. She'll have a boldness because, excuse me, <laughs> you're still my parents. Right? A son, that's the only truth you should know. And the devil likes to attack the simplicity of Christ. You know, uh, we say, no, uh, what, um, blood ka bach, uh, what, what do you say? Khoon ka rishta hai. Khoon ka rishta hai. Blood, you're, for English audience, you're by blood, children of blood. Okay? That's why. They, they say, no, we are jagarte hai, lekin kya kare? Khoon ka rishta hai. It's like that, okay? Blood is thicker than water. Yeah, but you're, you're born of blood. Even divine health is associated with blood. <laughs> that I should be well, and everything went on, rheumatoid arthritis, why should this be? I was getting condemned. Hairstylist told me, you bonded your hair, so now, because of that, the result will be hair fall. And she told me this lie. And then the, Jesus comes in my dreams and says, I don't care what you did. <laughs> You have a new law, resurrection life. Life, hair came back. No buts, what you did, what you didn't do, you should have bonded, you shouldn't have, you know, take care of your health, nothing. No questions were asked, simply, resurrection life is in you, end of story. Beginning of story. All my hair came back, okay? So, really, the world condemns you and it puts patterns and accusations and cycles on you. And that's the time you have to push it and say, yeah, it's good, but this is not applicable for me. The reason why I should ha I have all my hair back is because I'm born of him. Okay? And resurrection life is in me, law of life. There is no death in that. So where 100 people didn't get their hair back, humans, I got all my hair back. 
okay so bond no bond vaccine no vaccine doesn't matter your hair is coming from the holy spirit <laughs> not from the hair bonding okay 1 corinthians 15 the last enemy destroyed but now christ is risen from the dead and has become <gasps> the first fruits what does that mean do you know what first fruit is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep have you ever seen a crop and then the first fruit that comes out christ now christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep that means new breed after christ rose again new species like 2000 years ago there was adam there was a cow there was the dog there was the rhinosaur everything everything and then 2000 years later after christ died and rose again new species came on being sons of god okay that's what it is you're the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for since by man came death that means adam next by man that is christ also came resurrection of the dead for as in adam all die even so in christ all shall be made alive do you know why in adam all die adam adam has sin righteousness is christ he set a new law okay in adam all die even so in christ all shall be made alive because christ has the spirit of righteousness came in all but each one is under his own order christ the first fruits afterwards those who are christ's at his coming there is a second coming then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of god uh, kingdom to god the father when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power verse 25 for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet one second all enemies under his feet the last enemy that will be destroyed is death what is death an enemy enemy to whom to christ jesus hates death that's why how can jesus use his enemy to get you to heaven you have to die to get to heaven you can keep living till christ comes don't believe that lie he doesn't need his enemy for anything he calls enemy physical death is an enemy it's under his feet you can lay your life down and you're up but there's no death for a son believe this truth receive this truth okay for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet the last enemy that will be destroyed is death for he has put all things under his feet but when he says all things are put under him it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted that is the father he put all things under his son now when all things are made subject to him then the son himself will also be subject to him the father who put all things under him that god may be all in all i've just gone a few verses down there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body and so it is written the first man adam became a living being or a living soul the last adam became a life giving spirit so who are you a life giving spirit just meditate on that a life giving spirit this is where identity will coming because if you know you're a life giving spirit then you'll always be the provider you're not worried about who's making money man and wife will husband and wife will fight son is a life giving spirit you become a son you go and make that other person a son he will also become a life giving spirit so in marriage they both will be beating each other out who's giving more money because you're life giving spirits everything changes you are life giving spirits your words you go there's no depression in you you go and sit you'll constantly be ministering life life will leave to all so you'll always be the filling one filling the pot okay you are a life giving 
spirit life giving spirit however the spiritual is not first but the natural and afterward the spiritual the first man was of the earth made of dust god took the dust blew life into adam it says he became a living soul the second man you and me it says you're not born of dust you and me it was i um the second man is the lord from heaven all things are created everything that you see except you you were not created you were born from above adam was created god took the dust created him and put life but you and i have been born from above okay the first man so <clears throat> let's read that again the first man was of the earth made of dust see this it distinguishes you from the first man every time how do you sanctify yourself you're not the first man you're the second man your hereditary change everything change you don't have the law of sin and death adam has it and so all those who are of adam generation you born again your jath born from above you have a different law law of life so you chill hair bonding death i don't care law of life more hair okay see this the first man was of the earth made of dust the second man is the man is the lord from heaven as was the man of dust so also are those who are made of dust adam sin everyone sinner everyone adam same nature and as is the heavenly man you and me so also are those who are heavenly you are faithful because it's your father's nature to be faithful you are full of grace because your father is full of grace your words are spirit and they are life because your father's words are spirit and they are life you are just like your father you are rich because your father is rich you are born rich you're not becoming rich adam is becoming rich and he is getting his identity from the things he has but you first believe you're rich because you were born rich inherited wealth what prince harry and william have is very different from the world inherited wealth is just bap ka hai sab they had nothing to do with it believe your riches first you're rich you are rich you are rich because your father is rich when the time comes whatever you need will be in front of you it will be given to you and it will not make sense to you because it was not by the patterns and cycles of the world it was given to you by your father righteousness draws all things that's why jesus was rich but when he walked he had nothing in his pockets he walked he had no lack he tells the disciples go ahead the supper is ready you'll find a donkey or you'll find the person with the pot on the head follow them you go there you sit there the tax guy wants money we don't have to pay taxes but the law says it let's pay it so peter go take the first fish take the coin out for me and for you he is rich <laughs> he might be making carpenter things and everything he is rich because his father is rich believe you're rich first first comes truth then comes inheritance i am the way the truth and the life first you believe the truth when you have nothing believe you are rich because he says you are rich and then you'll see not the world rich his riches very different someone will write you some Oh, I believe some Arab will come. I'm gonna live with him. Suddenly he just likes the way I look here. Take a gold mine or some, some two three. You know, <laughs> I I I think like that. Huh? See, uh, uh, you don't limit your father. He can move heaven and earth. for you i told you once i had to get my bpl bill met this was the days when i'd come into the kingdom mom was not in the kingdom yet and it was 3500 and i was in this old bpl scheme that no one was but i was and that scheme was the most expensive scheme i didn't know there were cheaper schemes but bpl didn't call me to tell me you're on the most expensive scheme they let me be so it was 3500 in 2005 that was big amount okay and so i was like father i'm not going to ask my mom for this money you are my provider you better pay this i don't know how and so i go to a meeting and the, you know this 
one church meeting. And so I'm meeting, and so this foreigner has come from there. And then he talks to me, and he's like, uh, oh, I have something for you. He's saying, before I left Texas, he's saying, three women met me and said, when you go to India, you'll meet a girl. And this is for her. And then I open this, and all the names of God is written outside. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, all of that. He's my banner, he's my healer, he's my provider. And then I open it, and it's written there, all he is, he is for you, and there's a $50 bill there. Uh, note, dollar note. And I converted it, that time it was 3,500. Now see, someone, God can wake up some Nariel wala also, and tell him to give me 3,500 rupees. But what is it that the father has to wake up somebody at the other end of the world, take a flight that is more expensive, costs how much? 70,000 rupees, come stay in this expensive hotel, paid some dollars, thousands of dollars, to come and give me $50. <laughs> because, what is he trying to show? You are very important for me. I can move heaven and earth and spare, spend billions to get your little 2,000 rupees met or 3,000 rupees met. Because it's not what he does, your father, it's the way he does it. He can make Moses and that entire Israel go through some, but he has to part the sea. <laughs> He takes them a long cut, you know why? So that they don't run back to Egypt. That's what he was thinking. I'll take them through these cities, they'll meet some men of war and they'll run back. Let me take them through long cut. But so much of showing off, parting the sea and all, that's your father. He loves to show off to the world, don't, this is mine. And I will move heaven and earth to show off who's mine. And when you look at the style sometimes, you'll realize how loved are you. You are the Father's beloved, okay? He moves heaven and earth for you. He's all about you, not forgetting. Don't ever let anything tell you you're not the beloved. Yesterday I was going with Rishi. We were at a restaurant, another dear son and beloved. So we go out, our car gets parked outside for valley. The valley guy goes, I'm the lady sitting this side of the car. Valley guy goes and opens his door. So I'm thinking, I'm walking in, going in like, Tori don't feel like the beloved, yeah? And Rishi's like, ah, I'm the beloved. I was like, yeah, okay, go in. <laughs> then gets the, uh, other things happen, and I was like, oh, who is this? Like, I'm the, and then, you know, those voices come to condemn, and that's the time you say, Father, right, thank you. <laughs> I open my own door, <laughs> and I'm the beloved of the Father. <laughs> You don't let anything condemn you. He goes to, I told him, go and get two, uh, you know, paper bags from this one store that I needed because I want to copy the paper bag style, okay? If someone have done it right, just use their wisdom. So I thought I'll measure the paper bag. So he, he had to go to a store and get the paper bags without buying anything. And that store doesn't really like me a lot. So I send the son ahead. So I'm thinking of ways what he should say. He has just gone in and said, you know, my sister, she needs some bags. And they just give him for free. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, oh, I am the beloved father. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying, everything tells you you're not. And that's the time. It's not the things that happen that make you the beloved. You're born the beloved just because the father says so. Okay. And the more you receive that, see, you become a, you don't become a hook for the devil. <laughs> because no matter what I do, <laughs> didn't open the car door, she still believes in the beloved. <laughs> what? <laughs> How can I tick her off? <laughs> no signs in the sky, nothing. Yeah, all bad things. Like, no, nothing. Yeah, you're still the beloved. The crow shat on your head. Still the beloved. Yeah, the crow did shit on my head. I didn't know the crow shat. Someone told me here. They lifted up my hair and the whole thing went up. I thought water fell. <laughs> then I washed my hair. <laughs> So your pastor doesn't wash their hair. Someone said that your hair is so good or thick because maybe you don't wash it. <laughs> I just lazy. <clears throat> no, I'm not lazy. I'm led in all things. Um, have a bath, okay? Um, where was I? Okay, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, Christ, so also are those who are heavenly. Say, I am just like my father. Yeah. 
And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, Adam, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. That's why it says when you, one day you'll meet him, we don't know what we'll be like, but we know when we behold, we'll be just like him. Okay? Hebrews 2, bringing many sons to glory, for it was fitting for whom, from whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, not to death, to glory, to make the captain of their salvation, that is Christ, perfect through suffering, for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified, that is you and me, are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them, what? Brethren. Brethren. Lion's brother will be? Lion. Dog's brother will be? So Jesus' brother will be? God kind. God ka bachcha? Does God run? No. The more you realize you're God kind? You'll still, you'll chill. Okay? You know, the verse says, be still and know I'm God. Yeah, say that about yourself. Be still. Know your son. <laughs> I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I, that is Christ, and the children whom God, the Father, has given me. Lion's child? God's child? After Christ, you're not human. You became sons of God. Sons of God. That's why you can call him father. I keep telling you this. A dog can't call lion his father. How much ever he's praying and saying father, father. It's a different species. Only a lion cub can call papa lion a father. That makes sense. So when you say father, Know that when you're praying, it's same species. Then you'll stop a lot of your prayer. Because then you'll know who's praying to who. You'll chill more. Because God doesn't need any prayer. You were put on this planet to fix others, not fix yourself. How can the Savior, if you are the Savior, you'll save others, no? Do you, you need any saving? What is the biggest lie you'll believe? That you need saving. The more you rest, the more I was running after my hair, come back, quoting scriptures, nothing was happening. The more I relaxed, I went and took a job, who I was. I began to see who I was. The law of life started working out of me. I, all my hair came back. You don't, you're not hearing to become. You're hearing because you already are. The amnesia is going. You're waking up and now the more, more you know who you are, you'll end up resting more, worrying less, chilling more, not doing anything, sometimes just being, <laughs> being who you are. Verse 14, in as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death, one second, in as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, what does that mean? That is you and me. We had partake in flesh and blood and we experienced death because Adam sinned. That's why he, Jesus had to come in the flesh. In, an, in as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. He, that's why he became, took on the manner of flesh and came in the likeness of sinful flesh, it says. Not sinful. In the likeness of sinful flesh he came. And then see this, through death, that means he had to die. That's why Jesus said, remember he said that, I have the, the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it again. This command I've received from my father, no one takes it from me. So he can't die because he has no sin. He became sin for you. And he had to take on death, submitting to death, to destroy death for you. Okay? So it says through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. Who has the power of death? Next line. That is the devil. So the devil is his enemy. He needs the devil to get you to heaven. Sometimes we say that. You will die. You need death. And through death you will get to heaven. How can he shake hands with the devil? Death is an enemy. 
if in sin all die and death progressively started coming and after the law 120 years before adam was living 930 years i think 930 and after the law came condemnation came in now 120 how much more in righteousness you should start living longer and longer and 100 and 200 and 300 till as much as you want those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness receive it if you don't want it don't worry you will die how many want it don't fight this i tell people who fight someone told me without holiness you can't see god no i have to be holy i said okay don't worry i said you believe this now you will not see god i don't believe this i believe my holiness is by faith then he didn't like what i said no 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 <laughs> according to your faith let it be done that's why it has to be received you don't like this truth don't worry your life will be whatever you want die you want this truth you can keep living longer and longer and longer righteousness leads to life ever increasing life okay look at this so <clears throat> he might destroy him who has the power of death that is the devil and release those release who you and me those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage death keeps you in bondage like what if this doesn't work out there's death at some point and it's the fear of death that keeps you in bondage and what if you know that everything is life that i can just be that in my life no matter what it is but father i just thank you i'm born of you and i'm not trying to tell you like what life looks like right i'm just saying that your portion is life life means happiness life means joy life means abundance life means peace life means health your portion is life so then whether you took the medicine or didn't take the medicine whether you went for chemo chemo or didn't go for chemo it doesn't matter your end story even if you took chemo it's life it's not by the cycles of the world the world got side effects you will not your portion is life okay because death is under our feet for indeed we he does not give aid to angels but he does give aid to the seed of abraham that is you and me therefore in all things he had to be made made like his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to god to make propitiation for the sins of the people for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to aid those who are tempted i love the book of hebrews because it talks about the high priest and all your sins once and for all going on the cross forgiveness of sins is directly also relational to health look at this the verse down revelation 1 do not be afraid i am the first and the last i am he who lives and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore amen and i have the keys of hades and death i was reading what hades is it gives a description of after the soul leaves it's in hades i'll talk about this another day it doesn't say hell there it says hades okay i have the keys of hades and of death so whenever my time comes i will go who who has the keys who has the keys they're in your hands you get hit by a truck the truck will fall not you coconut will fall on your head coconut will break not you i i my cousin once she put a hand out the rickshaw toppled she knew very vaguely she had come into the kingdom I, I told her she wanted to watch a harry potter movie like all the other people i condemned her and said don't go then christ told me don't tell her who she's not tell her who she is i said okay you're a son go you want to watch among all the friends next thing she two days later she's walk crossing she's going to a college rickshaw comes she just said hey and how can a rickshaw topple <laughs> but seriously that is the truth yeah. if something bangs you they will get uh, you know hit not you imagine christ crossing the road and the truck banging what will happen either truck splits 
like the, the Red Sea, where he goes through the truck. That has happened, I've heard testimonies of that, people passing through, okay? Because you're of the law of life. There is no death for you, okay? Luke 5, very important. Jesus forgives and heals a paralytic. We'll end with this. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men, I love this, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Everywhere you go, the power of the Lord is present to heal around you. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before them. And when they could not find how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. Watch the chosen for this. I like the way they've described this. When he saw their faith, he said to them, now, one second. Jesus tells this guy who's come here lying. This guy obviously doesn't have faith. His friends are bringing him top down. They just want him to lay hands. They don't understand anything right now. They just know that this guy has some powers. They may not even know he's a Messiah. Okay? But now see this. What does Jesus say? When he saw their faith, he said to them, Man, your sins are forgiven you. So he expects to release something to this guy that is going to bring healing in him. And what is he saying? That all your sins have forgiven you. What is it that by telling this guy, he might be the worst sinner, but your sins are forgiven. And that it will be proportionate, you're paralyzed, you can't walk. It will be proportionate to divine health that makes you get up and walk. Righteousness consciousness. He's saying something in advance because he's going to do it for him. Okay, now see this. It says here, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this? Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? After Jesus died and rose again, after he called his disciples, he said, now go, if, go and preach. The Holy Spirit is with you. And then he says, if you forgive the sins, they are forgiven. If you don't, they are not. Do you know that he's giving you the same? So let me say this pharisaical thing to you. Who can forgive sins? But he said this about you. But God alone. Why can you forgive? Because you've become another son of God. If you laid hands and someone got healed, it's not because human laid it. You may think it is human. Because only the son of God can lay hands and they will get healed. So you might not catch up, but your spirit already knows who's doing it. Okay? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say? So he's talking about easiness. What should I preach? What should I preach? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you or to say rise up and walk? Which is easier? What should I do? Should I lay hands on everybody and get them healed? But he's saying there's an easier way out, Priya. Preach the message of righteousness, consciousness. It'll get the job done. That's what we're doing. Okay, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to rise up and walk. It's, it's almost like he's saying they're both related to each other. But that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sin. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. <laughs> Got up. Sins are forgiven you. Who is this to forgive sins? Sin consciousness leads to condemnation, leads to death. Righteousness consciousness this guy doesn't know. His sins are forgiven. Righteousness gets up and walks. Righteousness leads to life. That's why keep coming and hearing righteousness, righteousness, you'll get rich. The relationships will get fixed or you'll get added. Means at the end of it, there'll be life. Sicknesses will leave. It's all a product of righteousness. So we're not about come here, let me lay hands. There is an easier way. God calls, which is your sins, past, present, future, all forgiven by the blood, right? We are standing in the righteousness that he has given us. All manner of sickness is because of sin. Okay? And it's, it's manner of death. What is death? Lack of health. 
lack of health in an area is sickness. Lack of life in a relationship, bad marriage. At some point, it's death. And so what happens when Christ comes in? Death leaves. There's life coming in. So that life in health will be what? Divine health. It'll kick out the sickness. That life in a marriage will kick off all the bad divorce or whatever the uh, um, you know the things that cause just no life in that it'll just give life and it'll lead to a blessed marriage in careers life is coming in suddenly it's not based on i really believe i became more intelligent when i came into the kingdom i was not that good at maths then i became very intelligent so i believe others may not yet <laughs> but i believe <laughs> but it really is is because righteousness leads to life so you don't need mathematical wisdom you need god's wisdom to do things okay so let's give a tithe let's stand next week don't miss i'm gonna go into cts make it more practical about health and i believe like you'll start seeing divine health in your body okay and y'all will be sharing a lot of testimonies so let's give a tithe a thanksgiving of all the increase in life you received just say jesus I thank you, you're my high priest. And right now, I give you a tithe, a thanksgiving of all the increase and life that you brought, got to my soul. And just with your heart, just thank him for all the life, for everything that you heard, for everything that came to you right now. Just thank him. Just say this out to me. Father, I thank you that my life comes from the Holy Spirit, from you that is within me. And your life in me is giving life to this mortal body yeah all that you have given me comes to me yeah my words are spirit and they are life amen